I've taken the breast hook out of the steam bag. It had been steaming in that bag for four hours, and believe me, it was hot in there. So when I took it out and cut the plastic off, I had to just let it cool off. And uh, you'd think when you pulled it out of the bag, it would look wet, but uh, it doesn't look wet. It looks dry. It's so hot inside of it that it dries the surface right off immediately when you pull it out of the bag. And uh, you'd think that you're wasting your time, but you're not. You, you can't even handle it. It's so hot. So once it cooled down, I really couldn't stand it. I had to fit it in place there and whittle at it just a tiny little bit. And I knew it would change shape just a tiny bit, but maybe not as much as it would if I just let it be green, you know. So uh, I think I did the right thing with that. But uh, I wanted it to fit right in position because I wanted to figure out exactly where the in whales were going to come in and land in here and cut that out and then center this thing up and cut the center line out right here like this, this nice round shape. And I've done that. So it's all fit in place. And uh, that's the one we're going to use. I've got some other pieces that Michael brought me right here that are really nice ones that I might use in another boat at some point. I'm sure I'll use that one right there. That's a real nice one. This one may not be bad either at all. So uh, I got a few pieces and uh, I've got some really nice pieces that I've got for Courtney's back aft. Now these pieces have already been steamed and cooled off and everything. And this one piece right here on the starboard quarter, I fit in place already. And uh, it's got an angle cut on it here and an angle cut on it over here. I'll show you how I did that. But uh, I wanted to fit it nice and early because I wanted to let it sit there for a couple of days and see if it would change shape at all. But uh, it's been sitting there a couple of days. It hasn't seemed to change much at all, not a single bit it as a matter of fact so we're pretty happy with that and uh, I'm going to show you exactly how I fit that one by this side right here now we're on the port side and the first thing I wanted to do was wiggle this piece around a little bit until I kind of got it exactly where I wanted it just kind of estimating it looking at it I'm going to put a line on the side that represents the top of the planking and one on the back here that represents the top of the transom and cut it right there so the first thing I did was put a mark at the end of it right here, the forward end, an inch from the outside of the plank and see that V'd mark right there. And back aft, you can see the other mark that I've put right here, an inch from that straight edge. Now, I'm going to use those two marks, draw a line for and aft right here that just represents a line parallel to the top of the plank and like that right there. Now, I just got to be careful it doesn't move when I draw the line, but now, I don't have to draw or cut right on that line, but I do have to cut parallel to it. And I've done the same thing back after you. I put my straight edge up and measured in an inch and three quarters to a mark right there, you see. And I've done the same thing to the starboard end of it right here. Now, those two marks represent the top of the transom. But before I make these cuts on the bandsaw, I'm going to have to steal the bevels from underneath. So I've got the knee up there where it belongs, and I'm just going to reach underneath with a bevel set and take the bevel between the bottom of the knee and the side planking. So what I'll do then is take my little bevel set over and set the bandsaw just visually, because it doesn't have to be perfectly accurate. And then once I've got that tightened up, I'll go ahead and make that cut. Now, you've got to be careful here now because you don't want to wander over the line even a little bit because it just means that you're going to have to trim that much more off when you go to fit it if you want it to look really nice. You want to have the line evident even after the cut is made. Now I'm going to take the piece back over to the boat. I'm going to set it back up in position. I've got it propped up on a little tiny piece of wood up on the side plank in there because I want it to parallel the side plank in there. And then go right back to my bandsaw and set the bandsaw visually again. We're being careful not to cross this line either so we can see that pencil line or traces of it when the cut has been made on the knee. That way we know we don't have much to trim off. So I've got the quarter knee cut out on the bandsaw now, and I'm going to take it back over to the boat and just fit it into position real quick like and see what I think here. Now, I'm going to pull it right up against the side plank and like a clamp with my hand and look it over. Wow, it's just about the right height over here. That means this angle's right. All I really have to do is just tune that up, straighten that up a little tiny bit. Now I'm going to pull it up against the transom like a clamp and the forward end of it rises up a little bit. That just means there's a little tiny bit of extra material right here at the bottom. So the angles aren't bad. All I got to do is smooth it up a little bit and make it fit. Now, I also wanted to show you 
why it was that I did it that way. Now, obviously, you can see it worked pretty good. And I think that if I were to try to use a pattern, what would happen would be I have to waste a whole bunch of material to make a plywood pattern. Then I have to fit that, figure out how to trace it and everything else. This isn't worth it. Patterns either have to be fit or they have to be spiled somehow. In order to spile it, I would have to suspend the pattern and then make spilings and transfer the spilings onto the piece of wood. You know, it all would work really great, but it's just so simple for me to just kind of crank it out like that, real easy like that, and then all it really requires is a little bit of fitting with an electric plane, and that would happen anyhow, no matter how I took the pattern, no matter what I did, I'm gonna have to do what I'm just about to do right now, and that is pick up my electric plane and tune it up a little bit and make it fit. Now, I'm gonna do the side of it first. I'm just gonna stabilize it a little bit. I'm planing this piece where I know there's some material that needs to be removed. Now, I'm holding it basically in my bare hands, just resting it against the transom. And there's a planing technique involved here, but uh, you just have to be careful that you don't remove too much material. The plane is not taken off much at a time. It's just a nice, neat little cut. Let's see what that looks like. Clamp it up with my clamps here. Wow, look at that. I mean, it couldn't fit any better than that. You, you can't even see space whatsoever, one end to the other. So I don't think there's another tool in the world you could use that make, make that happen as easy as that. Now we're gonna fit the transom as well here. And like I said, I'm gonna pull it up against the transom again. Yeah, I'm gonna make a couple passes on the transom end of it here. Hopefully the last fit here. Even it up there. Nice. Yeah, that fits great, just like that. So, the next thing I'm gonna do is take a pencil and just get some lines on the planking and on the transom underneath it here. Because I wanna drive a couple of nails in there so I can rest it on the nail. Now I just want to show you before we put this knee in place that uh, this is the way we envisioned it from the beginning, that this would be part of the trunk of the tree right here, and this would be the bottom side of a branch. And you can see that the grain follows it right around, all the way from the trunk right into the bottom side of the branch, so that's consistent. It's kind of like laminates in here, but I didn't have to do it, it was already done for me. Now, I like this too because look at the grain. It's got that swept appearance all the way right up into the corner, which probably doesn't do you any good, but it really makes it look really nice. Like, uh, that's the way we want it to look right there. Now, let's just fit it into position on top of the nails that we put in there and let it rest right there. The other thing we have to do is shape the inside of it, but we're gonna do the rest of it on the other side first. We're gonna shape that one out first and design the notch for the in whale and then take that piece over here and trace it out on top of this one and then cut this one out. Now look at that grain, doesn't that look nice? It just looks fantastic. There's a little blemish in it right here, but I don't think that thing does anything but add a little character. We've mocked off under the knee with a pencil on the transom and on the side of the boat removed the knee and then we slipped our corner post in position and transferred those mocks onto the corner post. Then I took a steel rule and I put it on the mock and paralleled exactly where I think that knee is going to be sitting like on the transom and struck it across the face of that corner post. Then I just took it out and connected up the two lines just like that. Took it over to the sawhorse and lopped it off with a handsaw. I'm gonna do the same thing up forward here to fit the breast hook. Now, I fit the breast hook already once and it fit really nice, but when you look at it now, it's got a little space on the top on both sides and a space up forward. So I know that the top of it has shrunk a little bit. So the thing I'm gonna do is take my hands like I did back aft and squeeze it as tight as I can. And I can see it rise up on the other side over there. So I know that it's in contact at the bottom of the knee right here, but not really at the top. And uh, probably the same thing on the other side. Pretty much the same thing, this rises up. So 
and then it's butted against the stem as well. I can feel that. It needs to be fit forward, and the two sides need to be trimmed up a little bit, and I'm just going to take it out and uh, mark it with a pencil here where I want to do it. I'm just going to put a line right here, pretty much for you guys to look at, because I don't really need to have this, but I'm going to remove material on this whole face right here without touching it up here. So I'm just going to plane it, kind of tape it off a little bit off the bottom edge right here. I'm going to take some off the bottom right here, and I'm going to take some off the bottom over here and try to fit it forward and just tune that angle up a little tiny bit with the electric plane. Now, the way I do it is I'm going to transfer it over to a sawhorse to do this, but I'm going to take the electric plane and I'm going to put it on there, and I'm not going to let the blades extend out past that edge right there. That way I'm not going to plane that edge at all. I'm going to skew the plane around there a little bit. I'm going to really get the feel of the infeed table really nice to start. And I'm going to make a nice clean pass just along there like that. And it's going to taper off a little bit at the bottom. And if I want to know how much I took off, well, that's kind of a tricky thing. The easiest way to figure out how much you took off is look at the floor and see how much you threw out of the plane or onto the floor. That way you know what happened. And then maybe you can just decide to take another pass or not. Well, you know, it's kind of up to me to just kind of estimate it. And uh, it's a nice straight fit. One of the things about a skiff is, is that all these pieces are straight fits. They're not uh, curved or it doesn't have a, a, a progressive bevel to it or anything like that. It's a straight fit. Basically, what you're trying to do is get that straight line to be at the right angle and the thing's going to fit. The same thing on the other side and the same thing up forward. So there's still some technique involved to handle this electric planer and make that happen because this is kind of joinery work almost with an electric planer. So I'm going to take it over to the horse now and uh, get started. I've got the piece stabilized on the sawhorse right there, but uh, I'm kind of got it in my hands as well, so I can really get the feel of it, whether or not that planer is laying down there nice and flat or not. Let's fit it in and see how it looks. Wow, the starboard side fits really, really nice. The angle is just right, and the port side still got a little tiny bit of space at the top, not much. I think it needs one more pass or so on the port side here before it'll fit just right. There you go, that's pretty much it right there, just like that. I didn't even have to take any off the forward end of it. Oh, right, that's just about it right there, because it just doesn't have to fit any better than that. It's going to have rubber in between there anyhow, but, uh, so, uh, boy, I think that looks great. Boy, I'll tell you what, that's kind of a cut above right there. I've never done one of these before in a skiff. I mean, I've done it on some small rowboats, some important little boats, but for a skiff, this is really, really, really something right here. And, uh, I think it's probably something that uh, people may think that you can't even get out of the woods, you know, out of these kinds of trees. But look at that. It's really nice. It really looks cool. It's got that burly effect right in the middle right here. It doesn't have any kind of a real structural imperfection in it at all. Grain following it right around. Oh, God, I love it. It looks great. thing didn't need much fitting. It didn't move much after I steamed it. It really didn't. And uh, it looks pretty nice. I, I'm glad I did it. It was worthwhile. It's something I'll never forget doing, going out in the woods and getting this thing and bringing it and uh, cutting it and sticking it right in the boat and steaming it up and all these different things and, uh, and uh, even making the videos out of it. Fantastic. So uh, the last thing to do here is to bed our breast hook into place. So we're going to put it up there and drill some holes, spread some bed and compound and fasten it in place. And there it is complete and it looks good. Now the next thing for us to do is move on to our in whales.